And now uh, for our keynote speaker. Uh, I'd like to just add a couple of personal uh, comments about this next individual. Uh, I've gotten the opportunity to uh, get to know this young man over the past year. And uh, the story that you'll probably hear today is nothing less than inspiring. It's what we all as African Americans who uh, are born and raised in America should really strive to try to uh, achieve and try to grow into. Uh, this young man has done so much for the local community and the city of Cleveland. And this young man has definitely uh, been an impact um, to me personally and to other young people throughout the city. Dion Yang is an international and domestic political consultant, activist, mentor, dedicated community leader, and recent recipient of the Call and Post Most Influential of Northeast Ohio Award. His proactive message of perseverance and success, in spite of overwhelming obstacles, will inspire us to look toward the future with high expectations and a renewed sense of hope. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dion Yang. Thank you, Fred. Um, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Council President, um, the clergy, Director Blend Griffin, and Pastor Sattler, and everybody that's here today, the citizens of the city of Cleveland, I say good afternoon and thank you for giving me the opportunity, Mayor, to be here today to speak to the community. It's a great honor to be here. Um, we, we are here today to reflect on the rich heritage of our ancestors, the African-American ancestors. The legacy defined by great hardship and great triumphs. It is a legacy that made strong through the bonds of family and communities working together for a common goal. And it's the legacy of people who understand what it is to have to fight for what you believe in. It is very important to remember and pay respect to this legacy because it's built the foundation of a people so strong that no matter what, the odds, they will not be defeated. The people gathered here represent a wide range of that legacy today. Some of you remember the civil rights movement. Some of you participated in it. And some of you, like myself, are too young to remember when those struggles were ranging but have fought battles in your own lives. I myself fought battles of my own lives as well. Eight years ago, I took a chance, took a long trip from Africa to the United States of America with a lot of challenges ahead of me that I was aware of, some, and some I wasn't. And some of those was not having a family member, not having money in my pocket but $20. But I knew there was a better place somewhere out there in the United States for me to create a better life for me and my family. And today, eight years later, only in the United States of America I can be in front of you to talk, to speak. So honored to remember so many men and women who struggled, who puffed this way, for me and you to be able to have a better life today and to do the things that I'm able to do. My heart goes to all of those men and women who fought for me and you, to a young preacher, Martin Luther King, who fought, organized the civil rights movement. They stood up against violence, stood up for justice in this country, until recently, right in our eyes, we witnessed history to elect the first African-American President of the United States of America. And for all of us to witness that, it's a whole lot of history inside of that. 
Cleveland played a lot, played a very important role in the United States history. I'm very blessed and I'm thankful to be a part of this city, to call it my home in the United States of America. I read long ago before I came to this country about a great mayor who fought and became one of the first African-American mayors in the United States of America, and my heart goes to him, Carl Stocks, right in these steps the way we are today. I never knew that one day I'll be able to be in that city and to speak about this. So you know what God can do. When you dream high, it can happen. When you go hard, when it's tough, no matter how hard the hardships are, the challenges, it's always a better day when you're persistent and you put the Lord ahead of you. I believe we have a long way still to go. And before I go any farther, my heart also goes to those recent fighters in our communities that left us early, like Honorable late Congresswoman Stephanie Tubbs Jones, who inspired so many of us. She made a difference in our lives. And somebody who always, when I used to come to city council just eight years ago, couldn't speak the language, just sit in the back and watch how politics is being made in this country. Somebody who reminded me of my grandmother, of her toughness, of her hard work and her careness about the community, late Councilwoman Fanny Lewis. I pray God welcome them to his heaven. All of those people have fought hard for you, the future of tomorrow. You, our young people, and me, to create a better life for the next generation. They've done what they're supposed to do. If it wasn't for them, we would not be here today in downtown, in City Hall, with my skin, with you and me with an accent and speaking about black history. We owe it to them. Now, what do we need to do from here? It's great. Now, all of you, my young fellow brothers and sisters, I know a couple of years ago when they tell you you can be the president of the United States of America, you shake your head like whatever. We haven't seen one yet. It's not no excuse anymore. You can be the next president of the United States because just look up or just look at the White House. It's children like yourself that's waking up from there. This country has come from a long way. But now each one of us is going to have to play our part. President Obama being in the White House is not going to solve our problems if we do not take responsibility of our own community. As the mayor says it a lot, to make Cleveland a better city, a city of choice. The things we're going through right now, economically, everybody going through it around the world. Cleveland is not the only city going through these problems. But I believe together, if all of us bring our resources, you black, white, east side of Cleveland, west side of Cleveland, south side of Cleveland, lesbian, gay, straight, Arab immigrants like myself, we all can play a part into making this city a great city again. It's not going to be a job of one mayor or a job that you're looking for one or two leaders to do it. It's going to take everybody to do what they need to do to make it a great city again. On my way here, I learned that the city of Cleveland is one of the only cities that have a balanced budget that does not have to go through cutoffs and layoffs. So for that, we all thank you to all the staff and everybody who's behind our honorable mayor. We say thank you for your service, for what you've done for the city. Now, to make it a city where we want to see it, again, I'll stress on that. Everybody here, we all have to play a part. No matter what your background is, your education, no matter what your field of work is, you have something that can, you can bring to the table. Everybody can play a part. And an example has been given just recently. 
Senator Obama's campaign, everywhere in this country we gathered and we say it's enough. It's enough, we're gonna change the course, we're gonna change this country, and we're gonna put Senator Barack Obama into the White House and change the world. And what happened? Just two weeks ago, we swore him in as the first black African-American president in this country. If we can do that, we can do anything else. But it's not gonna stop there again. Now the work begin right here in our community. Each one of us has to look at yourself and say, what can I do to make my community a better community? I'm not gonna sit on the side and just complain about what such and such leaders are not doing well, but I'll ask myself, what am I doing? What am I bringing to the table to make that difference? So I'm calling on to you, my young brothers and sisters, and everybody that's in here, that we can make this city a great city that all we can enjoy it as it is. We have all the assets that God has given us right here. So if we're not happy for what we have, let's work hard like we did in the campaign to make it better. We have something we can really make beautiful. And I pledge to you that I'm gonna play my part. And if an African child can leave home without a family with $20 in his pocket, can make that difference, we all can make a difference. So I'm calling to you together, in, our, in the honor of our grandparents, in the honor of everybody who fought for our liberty and our justice, for a better country, for a quality of life, that we owe it to them. And we all need to get together and make it a better place and work hard to leave something behind for the next generation. Something was left for us. Now I want each one of you to ask yourself, what are you doing to leave something behind for my son Elijah, the three year old, and everybody else's children around? What are we doing in our part to leave that behind? Thank you for having me here and thank you for listening. God bless you all. Thank you. I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, much better. 